Hace Inglés presenta Into the Story, el podcast para aprender inglés con historias reales contadas por gente de todo el mundo. Today's story is about a long flight home. Hoy nuestra protagonista Kina nos relata una historia sobre un viaje largo a casa después de haber pasado unas semanas en Grecia. We're both crying. I run to the railing to wave goodbye when she pulls out of her little fanny pack my wallet. And I'm just like, oh no. Kina had an amazing time in Greece with her best friends. She says goodbye and starts the journey home. As the boat leaves the port of the island, she realizes that she left her wallet with her cousin on the island. It's too late to go back and get it. A lot of thoughts come to Kina's mind. How will she get to the airport with no money? How will she survive three days with only her backpack? Let's listen now to see what Kina does next. Hoy quiero celebrar contigo que nuestro podcast ya lleva 35.000 reproducciones. Estamos súper contentos. Y si esto es, es gracias a ti y a todos los English students que nos seguís semana a semana. So a big thank you. Si te gusta lo que hacemos y quieres apoyarnos para poder seguir produciendo más episodios, déjanos 5 estrellas y una valoración en Apple Podcasts. O si usas Android o nos escuchas en Spotify, Google Podcasts o a través de la web de haceingles.com, puedes ayudarnos simplemente compartiéndolo y contándole a un amigo sobre Into the Story. Thank you so much. Ok, ahora hablamos de algunas de las palabras y expresiones que escucharás durante la historia de hoy. Firstly, a fanny pack. A fanny pack is a word in North American English referring to una riñonera. Other expressions that you'll hear used referring to a fanny pack are bum bag or, or waist bag. A fanny pack. Next, a stash. A stash refers to a store or a supply of something that is usually hidden in a secret or safe place. So for example, a parent might have a stash of chocolate hidden in the kitchen away from children or a stash of medical supplies in case someone gets hurt. In today's story, you'll hear Kina talk about the stash of food she has in her backpack, a stash. To get rid of. To get rid of is an expression in English we use when we take action to remove something or to throw something away. You could say, I got rid of my old clothes that I no longer use, meaning you donated your clothes or gave the clothes away or you threw them out. To get rid of. Next, to pick at your food. In today's story, Kina talks about being on the plane and picking at her rice. What this means is that she was eating small amounts of food without enjoying it, or maybe not even eating it at all and just moving it around her plate to pick at food. And finally, to take advantage of. This expression, to take advantage of, means to make the most of something. Depending on the context, to take advantage could be positive or negative. For instance, I took advantage of the sunny weather to go to the beach. This is the positive use of the expression. But if I said the girl took advantage of the boy's help to cheat on the exam, this would be a bad thing. In español sería aprovechar de o aprovecharse de alguien o algo. To take advantage of. And don't forget, para bajarte la transcripción, la ficha de vocabulario y un test de comprensión, te dejamos el enlace en las notas del programa. Ok, let's get into the story. I'm Kina Bialini, and I am from Calgary, Alberta, which is in Canada, but I currently live in a small mountain town in BC. 
so in Western Canada, called Revelstoke. So in 2010, I went to Greece with two of my best friends, Sam and Bree. It was a wonderful trip. We spent the first week in Eos, and then Sam left, and it was just Bree and I. And we, Bree is also my cousin, and we had a little bonding time. We went to Santorini for a few days, and then we went to Folegandros for the remaining time of our trip. So Folegandros is a very small local island. It has only two ferries coming in and out, and there was not a lot of young people there, but it was beautiful. Kina had booked a super discount flight home from Greece. It had three long layovers, escalas, in three different countries, and it was going to take her about 50 hours. But first, she had to get to Athens to catch her flight. Nearing the end of our trip, it was getting very hard. Brie was going to stay in Europe. She had just graduated and I was going to go back to Canada. The ferry comes. I get on. I'm on the second level of the ferry and I go to the, I run to the railing to wave goodbye. Brie's like at the front on the beach. We're both crying. It's extra dramatic and we're waving the ferry pulls away and it's about 30 feet from the shore when she pulls out of her little fanny pack my wallet and I'm just like oh no it didn't even register right away because I was just thinking well I have my passport my passport's in my backpack and that's all I needed to board my flight but my wallet had everything else and money that I needed for the next three days of travel. So in my backpack, all I had at this point was my passport, clothes. I had some cream cheese because we had found a little kind of convenience store shop that had cream cheese and I love cream cheese and I had a bag of some nuts. This is supposed to be my snack for the bus and the ferry ride. This is 10 years ago and I don't have a phone because I didn't even bother to bring it to Europe because you didn't just get like SIM cards for them. So we were communicating even on my way there by email which was few and far between when you found it at an airport for free. Kina settled in for a long, lonely ferry ride back to Athens. So I got off the ferry probably around 7 a.m. And my main thought on the ferry was how I was going to get on the bus to the airport. And I was basically deliberating between asking a stranger to just drive me. And then my second thought was, I will just ask the bus driver if he can just help me out this one time. I'll give him everything I have. In my passport folder, there was some random euros, but not enough to, by any means, get on a bus. And I waited for everyone to go on. And then I just get on with my backpack and I just open my eyes as big and wide as I can. <laughs> there was a huge language barrier. I have no background in the Greek language. In English, we have an expression that when something is like you cannot comprehend it or it's just, it's basically not English to you. We say, it's all Greek to me. And in this case, it actually was. What if he said no? What if he just kicked me off the bus? I mean, it was possible. He sees this small little girl with a backpack that's probably the same size as her. He thought about it for maybe a few seconds and kind of gave me like a nod, like a go to the back. All right, take a seat. And then it was like, okay, what's going to be the next obstacle? So I get to the airport and I have about six, seven hours before my flight. And 
at this point I'm getting a bit hungry, so I dive into my my stash of nuts and cream cheese. And then it becomes time to go through security. And I'd seen a sign that it says the usual crossing international borders, no meats, dairy, nuts and seeds. And at this point I'm like, well, this is all I have for the next few days. So I think I'm just gonna bring it. And so I go to put it in my backpack, but then I started worrying, oh, I don't want to be interrogated. Coming home from Australia a few years back, I had not declared some of my items. So I was taken into the back room, interrogated, given a warning. A second time coming home from the Cayman Islands, a similar situation had happened. So at this point, I'm just about to go through security and I decide I'll just get rid of the nuts. So I turn around and I sneak them into the garbage can beside me. Someone had seen me do that. So as I'm just about to put my things on the belts, a guy comes over to me and asks me what I put in the garbage. And I explain just some nuts. But I, he didn't believe me. And I was I was like, you can look. They're just nuts and seeds. I just, I didn't know. Anyways, he takes me back into there, into the room where they interrogate you. They asked if I had any other food in my backpack. And at this point, I thought about lying, but I was already, you know, in a situation that probably wasn't very smart. So I told them and they made me throw that out. And so now I had nothing, but they let me go through security and on I went to Munich. Kina's flight from Athens to Munich goes smoothly. She's now on a transatlantic flight to the States. Until now, she has only been offered peanuts and water on her flight. But on this flight, she would receive lunch. It had been about 24 hours at this point since she'd eaten a proper meal. I am a very, very picky eater. My meal was meat, which I didn't eat at the time, and rice, which is one of my least favorite foods ever. So I picked at it for a bit, but I hadn't hit starvation mode yet. So, unfortunately, I did not take advantage of that meal. So I get to the States. The States is always challenging. They're so intense there. And you have to, you know, explain lots of things. And they just make you nervous. And at this point, I'm exhausted. And I'm getting pretty hungry now. And really kind of wish I ate that rice. And you don't realize that, like, you can't do anything without money. You just look around and everyone has all these things around you, like a coffee or a snack or a granola bar, and you're just like, I want that. I just want a bite. After a long and uncomfortable layover in the States, she finally boards her next flight. And then it was to Toronto, and I had another layover in Toronto. And now I'm hitting, like, severe hunger. (laughs) The flight from Toronto to Calgary is about four hours. So I get on this flight. I'm in the middle seat. The woman on uh, my right, she had ordered off their uh, like paid menu. She'd ordered a sandwich on bocaccia bread. It looked like the most incredible thing you've ever seen at this point. I think I was drooling. And she saw me. I'd asked her if I could just have a bite. And she turned to me like a little bit stunned. I just blurted out my whole story. And she was so sweet. And so she had ordered me a sandwich. And it was the best sandwich I've ever had. I land in Calgary. I was just relieved to be home. In all of my travels, I seem to find myself in a lot of chaotic situations it becomes more of like a game like an adventure and it gives me a little bit of an adrenaline rush that I think I love how am I going to do this how am I going to survive 60 hours of traveling without a wallet well let's see what happens Kina continues to travel and find herself in chaotic adventurous situations These days, you'll find her snowboarding or hiking in the mountains around Revelstoke, British Columbia, Canada. And of course, 
spending time with her friends. Si aún no te has suscrito a Into the Story, hazlo ahora en Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts o en tu reproductor habitual para no perderte los próximos episodios para mejorar tu inglés. También algo que me fascinaría es que este podcast conectará contigo en dos direcciones. Que aparte de escuchar, tú también puedes decirme cómo te sientes, si tienes una historia similar, si te ha gustado o no el episodio y que practiques tu speaking dejándonos un mensaje de voz de máximo un minuto en inglés. ¿Te atreves? Tienes el enlace para dejar tu mensaje en las notas del programa. Ok, that's all for today's episode. Until next time, we hope you have a good time, or at least a good story to tell.